Hello and welcome back to another episode of Upgrade with Maria Kay, the podcast where your success, freedom and happiness get a weekly boost. Hey, and a warm welcome to you, whether you've been joining me from day one or whether it's your first time. I see you, I feel you, I salute you. You taking time out today to listen back and really tend to your upgrade, not leaving things to chance anymore, taking your future life into your own hands really deserves a pat on the back. So congratulations. Hey, if you haven't already, do come on over to the Facebook group. Join us. We're having a blast. Simply search on Facebook, Upgrade with Maria Kay, and feel free to make any suggestions that you might have on future topics, anything that you really crave to hear about or you feel would assist you as you move forward. Please do comment, leave any posts, any updates on how your journey is going so far. Let me know. It's one of my most favourite things to do, connect with you. So for those of you who do not know me, I'm Maria Kay and I help people all over the world. I currently live in India. I upgraded my own life radically last year and I relocated from the UK all the way to India and I'm currently living on a beach. My dream has come true. I made it happen. I do the same for all of my clients and my students. Their upgraded dream may not be living on a beach, but they have their own equivalent. And we are having a blast over here, shifting them from a place of dissatisfaction and unfulfillment to a place of living each and every day in an outstanding way, waking up in the morning, not being able to resist jumping out of bed and heading straight into an amazing day. How would that be for you? What would it look like? If you haven't already taken yourself through getting to your clarity point, getting really clear on what your upgraded life will look like, please do go back and take that class because that is one of the most important points in all of this journey is getting clear on what you want and you know what being okay with what you want coming to terms with desiring what you desire it's okay I'm giving you permission I know that it's your time to shift away from living a mediocre life from making do from struggling from living a life that you that doesn't inspire you and make you want to jump for joy when you think about what you've got to do the next day. So today's topic is, is distraction blocking you from your upgrade, right? So I'm going to give you five steps to kill distraction because it's one of the massive points that blocks us from racing forward. Your upgrade should be easy, joyful and quick. Because as soon as you get clear on what it is you want and where you want to be in the coming months and uh, years, the only thing that really does get in the way is ourselves. So that's why I am giving you these really strong tips and tools to ensure that you do all you can to get out of your own way, open up the space and allow your journey to run as smoothly quickly and joyfully as it possibly can be. So step number one, and this ties in with really a previous podcast, and I've just touched on it very briefly in the introduction. It's really important though, guys, I cannot stress it enough. Laser focus, get really, really clear on where you want to be or what you want to create or who you want to be even. What is your vision? What do you wake up in the morning or go to sleep at night dreaming about? Now, for me, it was relocating from a colder climate and being in a warm climate where I could be literally living on a beach. Now, that might not be the case for you. You may have some 
totally different um, dreams and visions. And I really do hope you do because we're all unique and different. But whatever that is for you, get really clear on it. OK, and once you do decide or really uncover why, why do I want to live a life of freedom? Why do I want to be waking up on the beach every morning? Why do I want a really happy relationship? Why do I want a, a, um, an improved physically fit body and heightened energy levels? Why, why, why? really clear on why, connect with it, understand it, write it down, record it in audio, whatever you need to do. And then the key element here is to stick with it, remain focused, almost as if your life depended on it, right? Make a plan that's congruent with where you want to be in six or 12 months time, whatever time length you, you like to use. I think a great time span is 12 months. It gives you just enough time to allow things to develop naturally as well as bringing in that laser focus, which will help, plus all of the other steps I'm going to give you today, which will help accelerate. There's also a podcast on um, momentum. There's also a podcast on how to skyrocket your productivity. All the resources are there for you guys. So please just do dig in, utilize them and allow them to help you move forward. So once you become really clear and laser focused, you will be able to avoid the shiny object syndrome. You know what? That's the kind of thing that you that comes up, you get distracted, you get excited, especially if you're a creative type. If you've decided, for example, um, over the next 12 months, I'm going to write a book and that's what I'm going to do. And by, say you're starting in January, by December the 31st, my book will be published and ready to go, right? And then something comes up or you get an invitation or someone asks to collaborate with you on another project. Right. And it feels oh, it's exciting and it feels really good and it feels like a great opportunity. And what if I if I say no, then I may not get another opportunity like this. This kind of thing happens all the time. Now, there are going to be occasions when you have to just say yes. Right. But more often than not, these things just arise and they act as distractions. They can arise to Give us a little nudge, a little test as to how committed we are to our bigger vision, how committed we are and um, dedicated to our bigger vision we actually are. So try your best to, when things come up, ask some questions like that will get you clarity as to whether it's a yes or a no, like, well, why? Is this in line with my bigger vision? If I do this, will this delay me achieving X, Y, Z um, on month 12? Right. Stick with your plan. Stick with your vision. Get laser focused and be really wary of, of outside influences that can potentially come in and distract you. The same can apply if you're going for a, a promotion at work. If you are creating um, an upgrade in your business and you've committed to reach a certain level of income by a certain date, it's all achievable, right? As long as you remain laser focused and do not get distracted. So get laser focused, make a plan and stay aware of it. How do we remain connected and in line? So that takes me to step number two, which is connect daily. So not only connecting with your bigger vision, connecting in with your why, maybe you've got a vision board, maybe you use affirmations, maybe you do writing exercises to keep the connection, keep the vision alive, right? Connecting daily to whatever it is for you, tuning into your to God, source, uh, your inner being, the universe, whatever it is, really enables you and assists you to be present to what's happening. So, for example, when 
those additional projects knock on the door or when people ask you to collaborate or another job comes up or whatever it is or maybe you're on a, a healthy eating regime and somebody brings a cake or chocolate to work right there's always 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 going to be distractions but staying connected daily tuning in sitting in stillness meditating whatever it might be for you will really help you to identify Perhaps when you are veering off a little bit, right, when you are maybe steering a little bit too far to the left or a little bit too far to the right, allowing yourself some time on a daily basis to connect in, maybe analyse and really sort of take stock of where you want to be, where you are now, and what you're focusing your time and attention on. So if you have veered off course, this will enable you to easily course correct before you find yourself too far or too deep into the wrong project or the wrong decision making. Now, again, nothing is right or wrong. What I'm teaching you to do here is to make a decision that is congruent with where you want to be, that literally is going to enable you to get to where you want to be. For example, if you wanted to go um, from A to B, right, you'd need to literally take the road that takes you from A to B. And there's always a road that takes you straight there, okay? But if you wanted to go to a, from A to B and you went um, from A all the way through backwards through the letters, if that makes sense, going through X, Y, Z and D and everything, you would probably get to B, but you would get there a lot later than is possible. So tuning in daily, using tip tools and modalities like writing, like um, maybe you're on your vision board ticking um, the things that are that you're focusing well on, sitting in stillness, allowing that time to connect in and for your inner being to feed back to you. And feedback usually comes in the form of emotions, feelings, and also your intuition. So when you do allow yourself time to connect daily, you are going to be flexing your intuition muscle. Now, there's also a podcast all about this. So if you want more on how to do that, jump back into the previous episode, search for it and locate it and take yourself through that process. So just a quick recap, once you've got really focused and clear on where you want to be, make a plan. Now, if you it's not always easy to do that for yourself. So, you know, call someone in to give you a hand for this, to, to create a really strong strategy. Um, now, if you're fearful of I used to be really scared of making plans and strategizing. I used to think they were quite male orientated activities and I would often put my get myself into a real state when it came to that um I have a tendency to be an overachiever to be a bit of a perfectionist not so much anymore but what I found was that when you couple this very kind of left brain masculine activity with connecting daily which is a very right brain female way of just sitting and receiving guidance receiving intuition and messages it really powers up the whole process it creates a really fabulous combination so this is why these steps are actually important to be taken together as a as a collective so step number three is unplug now this may not have been relevant 15 or 20 years ago, or even maybe 10 years ago. Um, but in the age that we live in now of social media, of Internet, of smartphones, of you name it, device, you, you know, you, whatever you can think of, um, electronic devices that allow us to be constantly plugged in constantly. I mean, to social media, to um 
people who want to get a hold of you that you can you're instantly contactable these days right now i'm not knocking all of this technology you know what it allows me to to live the life that i do reach the people that really need me wherever they may be in the world and live a life of freedom right? It allows me to show up in the world bigger, better, stronger, and really live out my life purpose. So I'm really not knocking where we are and what we have available and at our fingertips these days. What I'm just instigating or suggesting is that you take time to unplug. Now, whether that be from social media, whether that be from trudging through tons of emails, whether that be from the TV or the news or, excuse me, whatever it is that you plug into. Now, you'll know that. You'll know it for yourself. Um, I spend a lot of time connecting with people in social media. It's my absolute pleasure. I've met some amazing people, both um, colleagues and collaborators, as well as people who really need my help. And I've been able to help them shift their life dramatically, dramatic transformation. So um, there are times when, or there have been, it's, you know, really under control and check um, right now, but there have been times when I felt, you know, almost guilty to take time off from social media well what if someone needs me or what if I what if I don't post and someone you know who needs to see that post doesn't see it and so on and so forth all the different things that come with modern day um, technology living so um, what I do suggest and what really works for me is what well, taking at least 24 hours per week off having like a, a detox, unplugging, at least 24 hours, whenever that might be for you in the week, it might be over the weekend, or it might be, you know, one day um, midweek. But also additional to that is to take at least two separate weeks off from being online per year. What that does is it allows the brain to literally unwire itself, right? from being wired in a certain way. Now, there have been studies to show, I'm not going to go all into the details, it's all on the internet available if you want to check it out. There's TED Talks, there's um, scientific studies, the social studies, to show that we are now operating as totally different human beings because of the new phenomenon of social media and Facebook, right? A lot of people think in status form, oh, that would be a good status, or Instagram pictures, oh, you know, if I go there, then I will get the, the, the best Instagram photo. So it's literally, it's constantly creating this additional heaviness in the brain and the mind on your energy, because whatever goes on in the mind, it's felt in the body, right? So in terms of your upgraded life, imagine how much extra weight you're carrying when you are constantly plugged in. You're not only thinking about what you have to do during the day, you're also reading about what other people have to do during the day. You're not only worrying or thinking about your life, you're also taking on five, six, seven hundred thousand other people's lives, however many people you're connected with each and every day, times that by three, perhaps, if you're on more than one social networking platform. Now, once again, I really will stress, I am not knocking it. I'm a big advocate. In fact, I love connecting. I love the fact that it brings us all closer together. But just bear this one thing in mind. Take as much time as you can to unplug from it so that when you go back into it, you'll see things with, you know, completely different perspective. You will have a clear mind. You will be able to see and identify the things that really perhaps were hiding a little bit when your mind is fuzzy with all of the information, all of the stimulation that is caused by plugging in to different things, TV, news, social, net, social media. So around the time that you do unplug, you'll find that when you do sit and connect, whether it's meditation, yoga, walking in nature, or literally just writing out on a piece of paper, um, and taking stock of where you are in re with regards to your plan and your bigger vision and your big why, 
when you do unplug, you will find that when you sit in and try and connect, things will be more transparent for you. You'll be able to connect a lot quicker. Things will, your, your awareness will be heightened and raised. Your understanding will be deepened. It just gives you um, a more authentic experience as a human being, as you living your life. So a massive top tip there, unplug. Moving on to um, the next one, stop comparing. Yep, stop comparing. Because comparing ourselves to others is the, literally the epitome of distraction. It conjures up false emptiness, dissatisfaction. It causes literal chaos on what could be or should be a simple, easy journey towards your upgrade. Now, this also ties in with unplugging because when you're living your life on social media sites, you're seeing the best of people. You're seeing what people want to share. I'm, I'm going to be the first one to admit, I don't want a photograph of me looking disheveled and all puffy eyed first thing in the morning. Why would I want to share that? But that doesn't mean I don't wake up like that. That doesn't mean that doesn't happen to me every single morning. But I don't really want to broadcast it. So, yes, you probably will see pictures of me smiling and happy and jumpy and together with it. But what happens? Our human mind hooks onto that, right, and sees that as reality. So chances are, if you've been following me, you'll see, you know, all the jumpy, happy pictures of, you know, me together with it. Maybe a little bit of makeup, sometimes without makeup. But you definitely won't see one of me first thing in the morning, puffy eyed. So your brain hooks into that, right? And thinks that is my reality, that I wake up like that. A little bit like what we see in glossy magazines, on reality TV shows um, and in, you know, movies and stuff. It's not real. But what we do is we end up comparing ourselves. Or perhaps if you're growing a business and you're watching um, someone else that you are quite close um, in, in journeys with doing exactly the same thing. All it can take, my loves, is one post about a success. Perhaps you're having a bad day. Perhaps things haven't gone so well for you. Perhaps a project that you embarked on um, was a bit of a flop. Whatever it is, it doesn't help to compare yourself with someone else. You are having a unique, very special journey. So, again, it's one of our most basic human traits. We do compare. Trying to unplug as often as possible from the outside world. I'm not saying become a hermit, but it's important that you do take time for stillness, for quiet and to be alone. It allows you to restore that connection with all that is. It allows you to restore the empowered feeling that you were born with. And it also enables you to stay on course because if you are constantly watching what other people are doing, it's very easy to get distracted, not only with those negative emotions and those feelings of um, inadequacy, but also with the tempt. So you're more tempted to steer off course. Uh, for example, oh, that person's... Um, gone on that course perhaps that's what I need to do or that person has is on that diet if it's something to do with your your physical well-being that person's um, cut out gluten maybe that's what I should try yeah we get really distracted you know even by the tv and advertisements okay so be aware of where you're comparing yourself to others and uh, that really ties well into unplugging so this brings me to the final tip final step drop the excuses. Whatever excuses you are using, they are simply a distraction, okay? Because I'm speaking from experience, not only personal experience, but the experience of working with uncountable beautiful souls who were once in a place of, like I was, <sighs> struggle, helplessness, almost looking like life was never going to change, never going to be different. 
because of X, Y, Z excuses. One of my really, really you, uh, you know, overused excuses well, well, I was, well, I'm a single mother, um, so I can't dedicate the time that I need to create um, financial freedom in my life without neglecting the children. Right. And this went on and on and on and on. And I really believed that. I really believed that I needed to work a full time schedule. I really believed that in order um, that needed to happen in order to create the freedom, um, not only financial freedom, but time freedom as well that was necessary. OK, so I hid behind that excuse. Not only was it an excuse, it then became a really ingrained, strong, limiting belief. And you want to be aware of, of, of that process, guys, because once you use the excuse uh, a few times, in fact, just once even, it can really it's like a squatter in an, um, uh, an empty house. It can really take root and uh, make itself at home. It's really hard to get rid of it. So what excuses are you using? Right. The kids, the family. I don't have time. I don't know if you've ever seen there's a, a quote um, circulating on social media and it says that um, I don't have time is the adult version of the dog ate my homework. And I think that's really cool. It's really simple, guys. We all have the same amount of time at our disposal. We all have the same amount of resources at our disposal. The difference is between someone who's utilising the time or utilising their resources is that they've made a decision. They've made a decision. Now, a really um, powerful thing to do is to go back to step number one, create a laser, uh, a laser focused vision, right? A really clear vision. And then com compare your excuses to that step, right? Are your excuses um, hindering you or helping you move forward? Are they accelerating your journey or are they slowing you down excuses are disposable you really really do not have to be lumbered with the reality of what your excuses create for life just like anything you can change them so if you think for example you cannot do something because of X, Y, Z, then change it. Change it. Now, there are more than one way to do one thing. You're not limited to one way or one um, system. Go inside, connect, ask questions, explore, delve in, become a problem solver, become a solution seeker. Right. And drop those excuses because they are simply a distraction. So just to recap, my loves, get a clear vision, become laser focused, make a plan, connect in daily to ensure, ensure that you are you, that your plan is congruent with where you want to be and that you are in line with it. Unplug as often as you can from the outside world, from distractions stop comparing yourself you're amazing as you are you're unique there's only one of you and drop the excuses right it really is a four letter word and will never ever ever enable you to be where you want to be if you have enjoyed today if you found it useful please do share with anyone of your friends family members colleagues anybody that you know who could possibly use a bit of a boost in the right direction. Anyone who's got a dream, a passion, who's maybe struggling a little bit now, send them my way, invite them into the podcast series and get them into the Facebook group. The more the merrier. I'm on a mission to help as many people as possible live the life they desire because they deserve it. Until next time, I am sending you as much love as you can possibly absorb in this moment.